Number one, Florida deputy fired for DUI. Last year, a Pinellas County Sheriff's deputy, Shelby Elise Coniglio, was fired after she was arrested on a drunk driving charge past midnight. The incident occurred late at night Shelby on May 17th. Coniglio around one o'clock this morning on 4th Street North. When Coniglio was pulled over by police at the intersection of 4th Street North and 108th Avenue North, when officers approached her, she attempted to use her status as a Pinellas deputy to talk her way out of the situation. However, that did not work. I'm a Pinellas County deputy. Okay. I'm a Pinellas County deputy. Okay. Do you have your license registration? No. Like, what, is she new? Who, her? No. Upon closer inspection, no. the officers noticed several signs of impairment. All righty. Go and step out of the car for me a second. We're just going to talk over there, okay? Coniglio's breath had a strong smell of alcohol. Her eyes were bloodshot and glassy, and her speech was slurred. All right. I'm talking to you, I am getting some signs of impairment. Okay, can I check your eyes real quick? To further assess her level of impairment, Coniglio was asked to take field sobriety tests, which she reluctantly agreed to. However, her performance on these tests was far from great. Need help? She kept stumbling and losing her balance. She also had trouble following the light without moving her head. You've got bloodshot, watery eyes, you have slow nope, speech. Nope, nope. Ultimately, Coniglio was asked to take a breathalyzer test. The results confirmed the officer's suspicions. Her blood alcohol content was well above the legal limit of 0.08%. In fact, it was determined to be 0.15% or greater, indicating a significant level of impairment. As a result of her actions, Coniglio was arrested and charged with driving under the influence. According to Florida law, anyone with a BAC of 0.08 or higher is presumed to be too impaired to drive. Coniglio's BAC was nearly twice that amount, which made her actions all the more dangerous and unacceptable. If you're gonna check my eyes, what after that? It depends what I see in your eyes. Check your eyes. No, I don't, I don't wanna see in my eyes. I wanna see after that. It's a building process, not a one test determines everything. Right after her arrest, Coniglio's employment with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office was terminated as per the policy of the sheriff's office. Fortunately, there were no incidents during her transport to Pinellas no, County Jail, and she was released on her own recognizance the following Tuesday. Fortunately, no major injury or harm came to anybody else because of the former deputy's recklessness. But our next story is about a female officer who stole money from a homicide victim. Number two, Atlanta officer steals money from homicide victim. It's not common that you see police officers appear in the news for being pickpockets. Police officer fired, accused of picking a dead man's pocket. This is an up late update to a story we brought you last month. So what happened here? Well, Officer Keisha Richburg was let go today. Investigators. But in 2019, the Atlanta Police Department made headlines when one of their officers, Keisha Richburg, was fired for allegedly mishandling $500 in cash from the wallet of a homicide victim. Body cam footage was released by the Atlanta Police Department capturing the entire incident, which took place on June 19th at the scene of a shooting on Marietta Road near the Inman Rail Yard. I, I, I just called in his job for him. That's fine. Okay. Just step back for a second. Yeah, man. Thank you. Can you still have the bag? I'm not going to mess with that because it's... Yeah, of course. For the... Okay. Thank you. The events unfolded when an ENT named Kevin Geeter, being the first person to come across the victim's wallet, which contained the $500 in cash. Okay. Eater can be seen on the footage tucking the money inside the wallet and then handing yeah. it off to Richburg. About a minute later, we see Officer Richburg holding the wallet in her hand, but now the cash was not visible in the slot where Geeter had placed it. The footage clearly shows her flipping through the wallet, but the money seems to have disappeared. According to the incident report given by the police department, Officer Richburg transfers the victim's wallet from her right hand to her left hand, it is readily apparent the money is no longer tucked inside the wallet. Later in the video, the officer can be seen handing over the empty wallet to a homicide unit sergeant at Grady Memorial Hospital. The officer was fired by the police chief in July. Officer's integrity goes to the heart of what we do here every single day, Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shield said in a statement. It's extremely disappointing to see the victim of a fatal shooting be victimized twice by the actions of one of our officers. The EMT, Kevin Geeter, also told investigators that the money was actually handed over to him by a bystander who said it belonged to the victim. I shouldn't have been messing with it because it was a crime scene, 
but it was just habit from not leaving patients' monies and stuff. Yeah, no. So I just picked it up and then realized what I did, so I handed it off to the officer, Peter said. But the Atlanta Police Union is reluctant to believe that Officer Richburg was actually guilty of the act. She didn't know money was in there, Vincent Champion, regional director for the International Brotherhood of Police Officers, said. The union also believes that the evidence on which the officer was terminated from her post was pretty inconclusive. They haven't proven that she had the money or took the money, Champion said. We don't feel the officer did that. Right now, Officer Richburg is in the middle of appealing the decision made by her department and hoping to reverse her termination. Despite her appeal, this incident would now be a permanent stain on the officer's record. Our next story gets a bit crazy as a Washington police officer makes a TikTok that people were not on board with. Number three, Federal Way officer has some advice for highway drivers. About a year ago in 2022, a video of a Federal Way police officer in Washington state named Brianna Strauss went viral on TikTok and rubbed viewers the wrong way. We're driving on the freeway in our police car. Get the out of the way. The department quickly took notice and found that the video violated their code of conduct and the officer ended up getting suspended for 10 hours. So what did she do in the video that caused all the commotion, you might be asking? Well, the 40-second clip starts off with Officer Strauss in uniform in her car, speaking to the camera and attempting to tell drivers about what they should do when they come across a police car on the highway. The officer then goes on to talk about the freedoms that she and other police officers have while driving that regular people don't. The TikTok went on, and Strauss kept telling her viewers that their best course of action if they ever find a police car behind them would be to get out of the way. Get the f out of the way. But it was the way that the officer spoke and addressed her audience that stirred up a lot of people. People were outraged. Some felt that the officer was being incredibly condescending. Others thought that this was just another cop trying to justify the police's abuse of power and thinking that they're above the law. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. You can't do that. While the video was removed from TikTok, it made waves across the internet when a Reddit user posted a screen recording of the video. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. The best way to find that out is get the out of the way. Commander Kurt Schwann of the Federal Way Police Department reported that the investigation into Officer Strauss concluded on July 7th. The department reviewed any prior disciplinary issues and looked at whether any standards were violated. Despite not having any prior disciplinary issues, the department found that Officer Strauss violated two sections of the FWPD's code of conduct, specifically in the areas of personal conduct and social media conduct. As a result, the police chief Andy Huang's decision, Officer Strauss received a 10-hour suspension without pay, which is equivalent to missing one shift, according to police records. When asked about Strauss's statement in the video saying that officers can find a reason to pull people over, Chuan said the department's investigation did not review all of Strauss's past arrests made or citations issued to civilians. We not received any complaints against Officer Strauss regarding arrests, citations, or traffic stops. While this incident and the outrage remained limited to social media, the next one went a bit more extreme than it needed to be. Our final story covers an officer getting fired for pulling out her gun on a handcuffed suspect. Number four, deputy fired for pulling a gun on cuffed suspect. Back in October 2020, a Clayton County deputy was fired for taking things too far during an arrest of a suspect in handcuffs. While in the midst of a particularly difficult arrest, Deputy Nicole Pitts lost her cool and pulled out her handgun, holding it to the man's head. Another Clayton County deputy has been fired for excessive force. The sheriff says the deputy held a gun to the head of a handcuffed suspect. Former Deputy Nicole Pitts was trying to get a handcuffed suspect into the back of the patrol car. According to a press release by the Clayton County Sheriff's Office, the suspect had his hands cuffed behind his back. But he refused to get into the back of the police vehicle and it made it really difficult for the officers on the scene. The Sheriff's Office wrote, Deputy Pitts pulled out her issued sidearm and held it to the suspect's head under his chin to get him to comply. Unfortunately, the body cam footage from the incident was not released to the public. But it turns out that one of the officers on the scene described the whole incident to his supervisor. The supervisor reported the incident to Sheriff Victor Hill who got in touch with the Internal Affairs Investigation Department, and a probe was quickly launched into the incident. Vince Velasquez, a retired and decorated Atlanta police detective, called the deputy's actions egregious. This deputy removes her service weapon and places it under this person's chin. That's not just improper. That's not just against policy. That's against the law, Velasquez says. That's an aggravated assault. The detective further talked about the possibility of this case being taken all the way to presented in front of a grand jury. 
If a civilian did that to another civilian, that civilian would be charged with aggravated assault, Velasquez says. I'd be very surprised if this is not presented to the grand jury for an indictment. Deputy Pitts was placed on administrative leave without pay the night of the incident. Sheriff Hill told the media that he fired the officer in the afternoon of the very next day. Pitts was fired yesterday afternoon. Velasquez applauds the deputy who called attention to the incident and the sheriff's department for conducting a swift investigation and taking action. This is a great example of officers understanding that this isn't about this blue wall of silence. Those days are over, he says. We can't expect the citizens to hold us accountable if we're not holding ourselves accountable. He should be commended. He should receive a recommendation for an award and be the example of what the right thing is to do when you see an officer doing something wrong. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time.